I've started this piece of hollyhocks. Do a little other painting of uh, this dark red. If you see the photograph, it's pretty dark. There's little purple, purple elements to it, but I want to make it a little bit brighter and more vibrant. I love the old-fashioned hollyhocks my grandmother had them in her garden and my mom has some in her garden and there's something about them that you know are pretty nostalgic they're also so you know paper thin like tissue paper it's pretty cool Some of what I do is just um, drawing things in, placing color. That might not be exactly. what I want it to do yet, but it's a close, not too far off. I like to use um, a variety of brands, Windsor Newton, this is like a Windsor Red. I also like Windsor Green from Windsor Newton. They're like really, it's a phalo, really is what they call it. Um, that's short for something obscenely long, but um, I also like um, manganese blue and I'm also using permanent rose in this. They're really clean and pure colors and they mix well together. Um, I use some, you know, titanium white. I use um, a color called Indian Red. Um, I use black occasionally. I really like um, French Ultramarine, which is a really nice clean blue. They're pretty fun to work with. I also like, you know, like the cadmium colors really well. They're nice and opaque. So they cover well, you know, when you're doing stuff like that. So I'll get more shading in here later on. I'm just kind of placing colors. You can still kind of see my pencil pencil lines there.
And there's a little interesting little shadow here. This one's going to be a complicated painting. Sometimes you get like really excited about a painting, but then you realize, oh wow. It's going to take a while to do. There's a lot of um, There's a lot of leaves and greenery and stuff like that. Kind of complicated. Sometimes that kind of stuff just goes on and on. Get a little tangled up in the details, but to be honest, that's kind of what I like about <laughs> painting. So this might look, this color I'm adding right now is that Windsor Green. It has a lot of blue in it, so when you add it with this rose color, permanent rose color that I use, a lot of it like really mixes well and it's really beautiful and rich. Use just a little bit darker tone. Oh, and the paint's still wet, so it just nice blends in really nicely. The joy of oil oil paint. And the way the colors mix together is just awesome. Now when I paint, you know, I like to get the, a little bit more, you know, I don't use the student grade or anything like that. It's not because they aren't, you know, the same color or whatever. Um, it's because they have less pigment in the paint. And so um, you're going over and over and over and you don't get good coverage. Um, it's a little bit frustrating when you're just trying to finish up your painting And because you're feeling a little bit cheap one day or something, now it's going to take forever. So, it's one of the reasons I just get the colors I want. I do a little bit of experimenting once in a while, you know, different brands and stuff. Um, different brands have, like, it may be called the same thing, but it's, you know, it's not the same exact color. Um, so I like to, certain brands for certain colors. I also use, I use Liquin in my work. I try not to use it too much anymore. I used to use it a lot more, but a lot of friends have been having, you know, allergic reactions to the Liquin and I like, um, the usefulness of it, but I don't want to become allergic to it, so I like using it. So, what's also nice about it is I like to put these little different things that are going on, you know, like with flowers. Flowers have some, you know, you get the 
the big blooms, the fresh blooms, and then you have these little ones that are just little curling up in the corner here. The blooms that are done. It's always interesting to see. But I like to start with the, the blooms because then you feel like you've accomplished something too. I, you know, usually jump around, go to different areas. Try to make sure my brush is pretty clean. Be changing. We'll do this one up here. And then we'll call it a night, I think. What's interesting about these flowers is their combination of pink, pink and uh, yellow. Kind of, they're not, they're peach, but they're not really. Some of it is. Kind of some different coloration. I might make a more mauve later. Decide what I'm gonna do. See then the lick one is nice because it, you know, has kind of a smooth smoothing without it being like really wet. I'm just putting like the dark colors in. My background was done earlier, so I don't have to worry about it like mixing in with the paint I'm doing now. See how this peach color, it's a little bit brighter pink color. Kind of like it. Just nice to be able to just place in these colors. Everything's so much darker and uh background. Again. Too, as you go through stuff, you start to find all these things that you didn't realize were there. I think a lot of people just make assumptions that You have to really, you know, if you're doing it from a photograph, you just really need to study your photographs, you know, make sure that um, what you're doing is actually correct. I also do, you know, I'm doing this little series of flowers and stuff, which is really fun. 
Um, but I do a lot of architectural um, imagery. I live in Omaha, Nebraska, and we have an old market area, historic area, and I do a lot of architectural buildings in the old market. And uh, it's very, very important that you verify and re-verify what's what from your photograph, you know, have a lot of reference so that um, you don't get something right with your perspective. It's not as important with flowers, of course, but um, it's, uh, and people might not, you know, notice, but in the back of their minds, they'll be like, hmm, there's something not quite right with this image. And they might not realize what it is, but, um, so you have to, you know, be careful that you don't assume something is the way that you think it is. I think we'll just outline these guys, see where they are.